not least of which includes the students enrolled in the Laredo College Honors Program. It is important to also note that several other groups and divisions of Laredo, community, of Laredo College have worked tirelessly to make tonight possible. Thank you to all those groups. I want to congratulate the students especially who are enrolled in my federal government course in particular for their hard work and courage who will be here on stage momentarily. For without them tonight it would be impossible. Finally, I want to thank all of the candidates for being here this evening. As the students come, they will introduce each of you by name, at which point we welcome you to take your space on stage and we have name tags for you to figure out where you see. Without further ado, let me introduce two of my students, Mr. Aquiles Briones and Mr. Emilio Diaz. Con sus comentarios iniciales y se los concede un total de un minuto. 
Las preguntas se hacen alternando entre todos, comenzando con el señor Jim Bermanes. Tenemos voluntarios con cronómetro para asegurar que se corten las preguntas conforme el tiempo por seguir. Una vez más, yo quisiera agradecer a su honrada presencia y participación en el foro, que celebramos esta noche. En este momento, les pido a todos que se levanten y declaremos su juramento hacia la banda.
Good evening, both of you. My name is Emilia Diaz. I would like to begin by introducing Mr. Terry Neelan. Mr. Terry Neelan is originally from Gainesville, Texas, and has resided in Laredo since 1994. He's a veteran of the Armed Forces, having served our country from 1979 to 1982 in the United States Army as a DYA specialist. Mr. Neelan has volunteered as a game game manager for several sports at the Laredo Community College. Having volunteered for close to 20 years in several different programs, he now owns his own sports academy called Mad Dogs, which they have teams playing in baseball, dodgeball, and soccer that participates in the local leagues. Thank you, Mr. Neiman, for being here with us today. Good evening once again. My name is Aquiles Beermans. At this point, each candidate will be given one minute for their opening remarks, bearing in mind that timekeepers have been provided for their convenience. Timekeepers will wave colored flags. Green indicates it is your time to begin. Yellow indicates you have 30 seconds remaining. Red indicates that your time has expired. We will begin with Jean Bethmatis and continue from there. Thank you so much for having this forum for us tonight. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I have a passion for government. I have a passion for good government. I've spent the last 20 years working in the community 
at some level, whether at city council or an advisory board member or working with the agencies and entities that help make our community better, having been a student here, having been a uh, parent to multiple children who have gotten a higher education, including one of my sons who is currently here and uh, another who will soon be here uh, when she gets out of high school. So I have a specific interest in this, this college to see it progress, to get better, and to return to that prestige that it had years and years ago. Thank you. Hello, and thank you all for having, having us, having me and having us. My name is Erica Benavides Garcia, and I am a retired educator. I was an educator for 28 years. I started off at the high school as a business teacher. Thereafter, I was a department chair of the Career Technology Department. Thereafter, uh, and during that time, I did uh, sponsor several activities such as like the National Honor Society, the Student Council, the cheerleaders, the PALS, and, and just different things. I got my master's and I became a student activity director. So I know a lot about students and student activity and how the progression from high school to college, what it is, okay? And then I became an assistant principal where I then helped students move on to high school. I Thank you, Mrs. Oh, okay, well, thanks. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Excuse me. Um, I am former Webb County Judge Maturi Martinez, and I've been a member of this board on three separate occasions. My main interest is the finances of this institution, and I am personally responsible for really building up the fund balance, and I know that uh, we are very fortunate we have a certified public accountant who continues to be very much involved in making sure that the Red College continues in its financial stability. And it is because of that we have had exceptional growth, not only in this campus, but also on the South Campus. We are rated AAA by the three financial institutions out of New York. And we, by the fact that we have these type of facilities, this is one way, and we're very fortunate that we Thank have you, Mr. Ramirez, Mr. Ramirez, Mr. that will push very strongly in Thank you very much. more enrollment. Thank you. My name is Coach Terry Neal. My name is Coach Terry Neal. I was a long-time volunteer coach here. I said as a game day manager, it broke my heart when they did away with sports. I know sports can't be the only issue for a board member, but it be my main issue. It's a shame that you don't have the opportunity to shoot for sports. When you lose, you should have that opportunity, and I thank you. Gentlemen, my name is Priscilla Pantoja, and as a former student and former employee at Laredo College, I bring the experience and the passion to put students first. As your next board member, my mission will be to advocate for maintaining this institution of higher education a first class where students, faculty, and community are valued. I will work to expand the current academic curriculum full restoration of the Laredo College Athletics Program to increase campus security, invest in mental health services for the student body and staff, to increase continuing education courses so that our community can enhance their employment opportunities, and to advocate for full accountability of our tax dollars. Laredo College gave me my first opportunity to engage in public service. Today I'm here before you as your candidate 
for the Laredo College Board of Trustees. Thank you. This is a I pray that you give me the opportunity to be Thank your you champion. Much. Good evening, everybody. My name is Lino Sanchez, and I thank you all for being here, taking your time to come and hear us, and giving us the time to come and speak to you. Um, I bring to the table, I have four children, and I mentor them to become higher educated with a university uh, degrees. And that's what I intend to bring to you, to help you all, the students, to progress and to become the future of our city, the city that I love, where I came to live uh, after my parents died here. So I'm here as a candidate, hoping to do for you guys as much as I can for you and the faculty and for this college, which I also came in to um, study here for a while. Thank you. All right, guys. First off, thanks for getting the names right. That's a good attention to detail there on the Honor Society. Appreciate that. Uh, my name is Will Shroud, and uh, as Joe gave me an introduction and said, I'm uh, a veteran, a father, a brother, a son, and uh, at times a disgusted citizen. So I uh, have a degree in political science, I decided, well, um, let's start where you're at, and that's where I am, is, which is here. Um, when I was an engineer, I went to Afghanistan in 2003, we hit the ground, and everything was needed by everyone that was there. Engineers provide that for everyone. That kind of attitude is exactly what I want to bring to this job. There are new curriculums that are necessary to bring people to put butts in seats, which is what's going to pay the bills here. I'm going to keep the lights on, I'm going to keep the campuses rolling. Give me a vote. Thank you. At this point, we will begin with the first question. Bear in mind, each candidate will be given one minute to respond. For question number one, we will begin with Mrs. Erica Penaviles Garcia. Question number one. How important is it, in your opinion, for the college to continue offering a variety of course modalities for students? For example, online, hybrid, face-to-face -face courses. This is especially important since many students have conflicting personal and work schedules. Okay, it's the importance of course modalities, right? Which is face-to-face, -face, hybrid, and um, online. I think it's important to have all because honestly I think a junior college has to be all things to everyone in our community. Okay? To kids coming out of high school, to kids that, or to adults that already have a job and want to come back to school. So I agree that we, that, that is very important to have all the, all the types and I know that you do have them here at Laredo College. Maybe not for all the courses, but for most. And it is something that technology is um, at the forefront. So I would, you know, probably like to see a little more courses, you know, so that more people can apply and come to college here and grad, you know, get their associates or their their bachelors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to just say 
you need sports, but you also need other education. In any way the college can give it to you, that's a great thing. Online, in person, on the weekends, wherever you can take your education is very, very good. Thank you. Well, I believe the face-to-face -face, uh, classes is extremely important, and I recommend it to all students. Uh, you know, to experience the, a college, a holistic college experience. I do believe that school is never out for the pro. So I think, uh, like the judge said, we're extremely fortunate to be able to provide hybrid courses as well as online courses. Uh, and I do believe the college really, you know, it belongs to the community. So yes, absolutely, we should continue to add uh, courses uh, in every um, way that we can and make it accessible to students of all ages. Yes, I also believe in that um, online courses and the hybrid and the face-to-face. -face. Uh, it all depends on each one of us, what is it that we need, because, you know, younger students, you have the time, you have the face-to-face, -face, and because of the COVID that we have right now, we have to all go and be by ourselves. But yes, in the face-to-face -face, uh, class, we have a more uh, opportunity to be engaged with each other. But online courses also help those who are older, like myself, we want to go back to college and like to have online courses where we can uh, have our education without having to be present. It all depends on an individual, but yeah, I support all kind of uh, education process. Thank you. If you Mac, could you repeat the question for me? Yes. How important is it, in your opinion, for the college to continue offering a variety of course modalities for students. For example, online, hybrid, and face-to-face -face courses. This is especially important since many students have conflicting personal and work schedules. Well, the importance is kind of self-explanatory. Uh, you need to be able to put the classroom where the students are. If they can't get here uh, to make a face-to-face, -face, which I agree with the rest of the panel is a very beneficial thing. If you're a Gen Xer like me, you're not necessarily going to learn something from YouTube as you would be able to sit down in the class and have someone uh, explain things to you. But on the other side of it, the educational side of it, someone's not going to learn how to well be on the pipeline through YouTube. Um, that's something they need to be in a booth with someone that's got experience telling them how to do. So all these different aspects are what the school needs to make sure it's agile enough to whatever the curriculum is to put it in front of the student that's looking for that education. Well. Whether the college or not should have, offer all those types of uh, modalities for learning is important. It's critical. You need to make your college as accessible to as many people as possible. But the decision whether to continue that also needs to be data driven because what we're experiencing now is so many students who went through the pandemic fell behind in their learning or dropped out of school altogether because they were not equipped either with the resources or the technology to be able to take hybrid courses or online courses or uh, other uh, modes of learning and they failed to progress. So when we look at this, we want to make this offer all, but we also want to take the data and to see what works best so that we have good decisions made by our policymakers, which is us, so that our instructors have all the resources necessary, but that the students also have the technology and the resources necessary to learn in any environment, whether it's live or online or in a hybrid situation. Good evening, my name is Amanda Flores. And for question number two, we will begin with Mr. Van, Mr. Benvenuto Question number two. In light of the increase of violence on college campuses, how would you work to improve safety for all students, staff, and faculty at Arena College? Would you mind repeating it again, please? Do you ever mind? In light of in, in light of the increase of violence on college campuses, how would you work to how would you work to improve safety for all students, staff, and faculty at Arena College? I am the one 
that actually recommended that we increase the police and, uh, uh, presence in this college. Uh, I made that motion and uh, fortunately it passed. And it is also through my influence that we are now going to have the DPS presence. There is a building that will actually house Department of Public Safety personnel, and that in itself also. In addition to that, we also have the presence of the, the Border Patrol. All of these and their presence makes a big difference and a very positive impact on the campus. And I'm very proud that I have been involved in each one of these different uh, 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 motions that the that the uh, Board of Trustees uh, went along and, and uh, passed. Thank you. What we need to do is able to do more camping police officers. I know most of them, they go gas, but they need help. Like the judge said, the Border Patrol is crazy. We go out there for baseball, for the youth program, and, uh, and I see people walking around. They ain't got no busy out there. Where are they coming from? They coming from Mexico. So we need to give the Border Patrol more power, and we need to help the officers. Thank you. I think campus security is extremely important. In addition to LED lighting, increased LED lighting around both campuses, I believe that it's important that we have additional personnel in the you know, police department. Being, if not the number one, it's when we have one of the top police academies at Laredo College. We should be able to afford and offer cadets who do not have a job waiting for them after graduation a place here at Laredo College so that they themselves can start you know, their law enforcement career protecting their campus that saw them go through the academy. Um, I know that at other campuses, uh, students are afforded a hotline that they can call on their ID to get a cadet to escort them to their car at the classes. And this goes for both students and faculty. I know as a faculty member here, we would stay late at night and it was kind of scary walking just to our car. So definitely, I think we need to work on increased campus security. Being a police officer, I know how important it is to be safe. Now, it's not only the police job to keep an eye out for everybody because we're not all at the same, at the same place where we should be. It's, it should be a responsibility between the whole community. You guys need to be aware. You need to be aware of your surroundings. You need to be aware where you're at. If you see anything suspicious, you report it. Whether you think it is or not, report it anyway. And then that will help us to see what's going on. Yeah, if you do walk here by yourself, you call the police. We're out here to help you. We're never going to be, we're never going to say no. We'll escort you where we need to escort you. But you guys also need to be uh, aware. Also need to be taught uh, by videos and, and, and training, like we do fire alarms, so that you guys can know how to react. Because if you don't know how to react, in that time of need, you're not going to be able to do anything. And I know I have more, a lot more to say, but my time is about to be ended. But, you know, if we all get prepared, we can all make it be safe in our community. Thank you. <clears throat> um, security on campus is going to have, going to need three things. It's going to need personnel, it's going to need funding, it's going to need infrastructure. Um, or when it gets mentioned, it's about additional LED lighting along with that. There needs to be camera and security offices to have eyes where physical officers can't be. Personnel, which of course will be more officers if necessary, and have that scheduled around when we have the most classes and the most people on campus and know when we need to have people there. Um, management of that's uh, important. And then, like I said, uh, funding. Um, we have to be able to make sure we have something to offer these cadets besides just a job. It needs to be something that they can pay their bills with and then also carry on a career in law enforcement. We're going to have an academy um, that trains officers. We need to be able to give them that extra step towards where they go after their, their graduation. Thank you. Yes. Yes.
security should be paramount. You, no one wants to go to an unsafe campus. But that said, when you look at how we provide security for our campuses, the first thing we want to do is bring in more personnel. And that is one of the hardest things for an organization to do because of the cost factor of bringing them in. So being a council member post 9-11, we had a program called Community Oriented Policing that focused on a multitude of things that could be brought to bear that were called force multipliers. Having call boxes in more locations, having cameras in more locations, having better lighting, and then making sure that we have personnel at the right times, at the peak times, so that we can provide the kind of security and safety that makes us all feel comfortable no matter where we go. So I think it's important that when we look at a budget that we're able to encompass some of these other things to help keep our budget on Thank you for your time and subscribe. Can you repeat the question? In light of the increase of violence on college campuses, how would you work to improve safety for all students, staff, and faculty? Um, oh, okay. I feel like, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm almost sure that you guys have an emergency plan in place. In schools, you have to have your drills, you have your fire drills, you have evacuation drills, you have disaster drills. Those things should be done on a monthly basis and practiced. So when something really does happen, you're ready. Of course you're nervous, you know, and, and scared, but you know what to do. People come and, the, you know, there's action and there's play in action, okay? You need to have that. Other, I mean, that said, I know that you have a um, police academy here, and that is always a big help. I know you have EMS training. That is always help. I know you have um, the Gateway Clinic in the South, in South Laredo. That's another thing that helps. Okay. Thank um, you. Your time is expired. Uh, 
I do know um, how expensive it is for you to come and get it. Believe me, I have four at home, and uh, because of what I do, uh, economic-wise, they won't get any financial aid other than probably loans and stuff like that, be safer. So I understand that. And that's one thing that I'm, I'm only one, but maybe get together with the board and try to find ways to help you all afford education. Because I believe education has skyrocketed too much, and I don't understand why. But we can try to help and bring that down. Now, I can't promise that's going to happen, because if I sit here and say I'm going to promise and bring costs down, probably won't happen. But we can try. Like, uh, Ms. Pantola said we can lobby and talk to the government, partner with other people, try to get you all to help, do your FASFAs, because some people can't even complete FASFAs, so we got to complete that. And try to help you guys as much as we can. Thank you. children, newborns at home while trying to finish my junior and senior years. Um, one of the things I would definitely uh, say needs to be probably already done away with is the textbook bracket um, because you can find anything online pretty much now. Um, there are databases by the universities where you can just go and find whatever is a textbook. As for applications of the vocational aspects though, um, you can't get a stethoscope off of line. You can't get uh, welding rods. You can't get tools. Those are things that are going to cost money. Um, those are things that I think by curriculum, by program, cost will be adjusted to apply to what those things are going to be necessary. Nurses need their own tools and kits. Welders need their own tools and kits. Um, business managers also need computers to be manage themselves. So uh, each application needs to be done by that way. And uh, also, as they pointed out, Thank you, your turn. Part. Many students have monetary concerns and budgetary restrictions. If elected, how would you work to lower the cost of college tuition and other related services, such as textbooks and even bringing more students' jobs to campus that Hey, you know, the first thing we need to do is begin to work with the governor's office and, and the state education to start making community colleges like this, these local colleges, affordable, almost to the point where if you graduate from high school, you can come here and get your education at no cost. We need to continue to work through all the organizations in town that do spot, uh, scholarships to make those available to the students that come to this college. We ought to invest in the student success office. It spends its time looking for these opportunities for our students. We need to also collaborate with the community to find paid internships to help the students find their path to a career that helps them get the education they need to fill that career uh, dream job that they want. I feel like what you're asking is that how can you make it more affordable for students to come to school? I feel like first, we do have to have good recruitment in the schools, in the high schools, and when I was there, that was very important for kids, for the, with their FASFAs, with, um, with other parents, because some parents are not US citizens and there's a task book for that, right? And we need to make sure that they finish and complete it so that they do have some kind of an aid to come. We need to look at uh, maybe work study. I don't know if they have paid work study here, but you know, offer that. That's, that, that's important. That helps kids you know, come to school. Um, continuing ed, you know, people that come after, after hours, help out. The problem is that I think that what happens is that you have so many students here at, at Laredo College, but... Thank you. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Okay. We're very fortunate. Excuse me. We're very fortunate that we have Congressman Henry Cuellar who has brought in millions of dollars to this institution. 
We, Laredo College, is one of the institutions in the entire state that has the lowest tuition. And because of the kind of funding that we also get in support from the Women's Cities Club, as well as the Matias Diana and other local organizations, we continue to provide financial support to our students. And as a consequence, the loans that are made at the beginning normally are paid for by many of these institutions. So we have to thank all of these different organizations in our community that continue to help the Raven Cup. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. In the 
absence of, of a college athletic program, which I believe enhances the college experience. If you look at everyone who's ever attended a university of any size and has rooted for their, their team and their mascot, uh, no matter what the sport was, that became a, a big part of the experience of going to a university or college. So when you don't have this, the thing to do is to reinvigorate the intramural sports, those things that are driven by the student body, having other campus events that are driven by the student body. While I can make all these recommendations and ideas for you, the student body at some point needs to be surveyed, have their input brought in, and say, what do you want us as a board to support for you? What do you want us to do with our network, our business colleagues, our businesses to support you? And then fund these types of activities through non-college uh, or faculty paid or faculty driven activities, but through student body driven activities and then paid for by supporters like us. Thank you, Attendance. Can you repeat the question once more? Of course. If elected, how would we work to increase student life activities and opportunities for students to socialize with one another so as to revitalize campus life? For example, increasing dining room options, food services, student activities, and student clubs and organizations. Okay. Well, this is something I did um, for 11 years, but I think what it is is that you guys need a voice. I think that if you feel like you know you want changes in dining or you want to have clubs. You want to, you know, have a rotary here. You want to have robotics. Whatever the case may be, you you need to speak up. You need to speak to your 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 counselors, your advisors. You need to, to see your president. I'm sure, you know, I know that her door is always open. Those are the things that you need to do. You need to have a voice. And I think this is a great institution. I'm very proud of it. And I'm very proud of the work that you all have done. You know, so it's time. It's time for you to speak out and people will hear you. You have great ideas. You are our leaders. You are our future. Say what's on your mind. Thank you, your time has expired. The Raider Community College, the Raider Junior College, the Raider College, we have had excellent food services here in this particular uh, building. We have had quecas, we have had taco palenque, we have had others. There's no reason why we should not be able to bring them in when we put them out of this, where they in turn, part of that profit, can be given back to the college. And this is one way in which we can provide assistance to our student personnel. The student life will be better if they get sports. I'm telling you, you need a team you can cheer for. You like to be, go to Baylor games, go to the University of TSA. You see those teams, they go crazy. I was here 25 years. You need sports. I'm telling you, you that will be better with sports. Like Jersey. Offer Taco Bell. Thank you very much. Campus technology is very important. Um, 
I think we need to partner with uh, the city. Try to see if we can get uh, broadband and Wi-Fi all over the city, which some students uh, that I know don't have uh, broadband, especially in our community, uh, it's expensive. So for us to help our students to be able to get online with the um, uh, technology that we are going out because of our COVID and everything that's going on, yeah, it's very important. So I would look forward to working with some companies, maybe Spectrum, uh, and trying to get them to help us out and help our students so they can have uh, more broadband uh, Wi-Fi. Thank you. When it comes to broadband and technology in general, as it is applied across campus, there's more than necessary so the Wi-Fi access, which is depending on your application, if you have two days to get papers done, Wi-Fi is great. If you have 10 minutes, it sucks. Um, it seems way a little hard for me. Um, but uh, anything that we do as far as being a community college or vocational based school, if we do it at grading parts of the university's infrastructure to help the technology, there should be classes where our professors and uh, instructors have the students do that, to have real world experience while they're getting education at the same time, and have that apply across all universities. So as earlier, you have lights, lower the cost, implement solar panels, reusable energy, uh, as well as ways to uh, streamline applications for different courses as far as course materials and necessaries. Beyond increasing Wi-Fi, it, it really is bringing in the top technology to the college. Fiber optic is now becoming the thing. AT&T is bringing in fiber services to the entire community. Google has already reached others. I operate a company that builds websites, develops software and apps for clients. And so technology to me is very, very important. And so again, when we talk about multipliers, making sure that we have the best computers available, the best equipment uh, to be able to teach with, uh, everything from uh, the, the latest in whiteboards that are allowed to uh, broadcast what has been drawn on that board to all the students so they can receive that. But then we also need to make it accessible to those students who may not be able to get it at home. So starting a program where maybe hotspots uh, born out of a, a collaborations with one of the entities like Spectrum or TNT can be loaned for students so that you can take that home and be able to have the same type of high school internet at home and have access to all that. Thank you. Technology. I, I, I agree with what you all have said about, you know, the Wi-Fi and how important it is to make sure that, you know, you're you're up and at on. I, I think that you guys do have um, technology pretty much everywhere in your building. It may not be the latest technology, but I know you've got technology here at the, at the Kaysen, and, and you've got them at your, 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 health, your health buildings, your, your science buildings. So, I mean, I, I think that maybe what we need to do is up it. We need to work with different um, entities to make it better, to, to research, to find out. And uh, I think that's a collaboration between students and the faculty and the administration and then ultimately the board. The Red College is fortunate to have exceptional faculty. And proof of this is the nursing program that is rated number one in the entire state of Texas and among the best in the entire United States. This is part of technology of which we are very fortunate and are identified. We have to be grateful because our faculty continues to improve themselves and bring in the new technology that is constantly being introduced into this program of, of our college. We are, have to thank our faculty because they are being kept up today. Thank you. Most students get their telephones, but those students who can't afford their telephone, the college should help them the grants and loan 
we take in the telecom, we take in the, the information they need, and go to the student, come here, and they got our file here. But the grants and the loans are out there, and we need to use them. As a Texas licensed real estate agent, I've been working closely with my broker and our team to work on public improvement developments all over the state. One of, uh, one of the plans that we bring to uh, the South uh, Texas communities is creating public improvement districts where Wi-Fi is uh, setting up Wi-Fi towers and making it available to our community at a very minimal cost is one of those public improvements that can be done. So as your next board member, I would work closely with our city council and our uh, Webb County uh, elected officials to be able to bring that and offer it to our students free of cost. If not free of cost, at a very, very minimal cost.